I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. I love you, babe, so long. I know you got a sensitive heart. I do too, but sometimes we just got to watch it. We got to get through it. Good morning. My name is Gregory Coolis, K-U-L-I-S. Um, I'm the attorney for the family of Alexis Wilson. Yesterday, our firm filed a federal lawsuit against the Dalton police who took the life of a young 19-year-old woman. Approximately just under a year ago, Alexis Wilson was picking up to carry out order that she placed at this restaurant behind her. Uh, police were called to the scene because of the disturbance over her phone. Within three minutes, Alexis Wilson was dead. Police officers are reportedly trained to de-escalate a situation. That escalated into a deadly outcome. Every day is difficult. Every day, every day I wake up and face living without my daughter, a daughter that lived in the house with me, slept in the next room for me, helped with her little brother every day. Every day I wake up and I face that. And every day I go to bed with that on my mind. This has been the most horrific experience of my life. Again, I don't know why it takes so long for um, a law enforcement agency to investigate uh, when one of their own shoots a citizen. If it was on the flip side, somebody would be charged within 48 hours or 24 hours, and that person would be in a criminal court bill. What would this federal lawsuit do? Well, the first, the first thing it's gonna do is give this family answers. The Wilson's deserve answers. To I'm minute read, okay? We're gonna let our beautiful who voice I chose today. I'll try to make a subtle voice. Who? Who did I chose? Miss Miss Shan? No, who did I chose? Heather. So Heather's gonna be our reader for today, and I'm gonna be in the comments as well, asking you guys some questions because I want you to listen to the details of the filing. Now that we have details and some questions to ask, I want you guys to kind of answer some questions or ask some questions. If that was your daughter, put yourself in her shoes. If that was your neighbor, if that was in your town, everybody from here is not. From Dalton, so my I, I always ask for you guys to step out of the me, 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 and step into the shoes of the people that you know we are viewing, so we can look at them more humanistic than just we watching YouTube. You know, it's just TV. It's not. That's why Grace Levi be crying because I be know I'm like this ain't TV. This she real. You know, these people just acting like bullets don't hurt. They act like you know flesh don't cut just confusing to me the world today so let me put this on the screen um let's get this right here we're going to get it started okay please hit the like button I, I i'm glad that you guys are here i'm going to ask a few questions in the audience i will hope you answer so i can start kind of like we kind of doing some things here okay let's go Complaint AT Law now comes the plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, deceased, by and through her attorneys, Gregory E. Coolis and Associates, Limited. Complaint AT Law now comes the plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, deceased, by and through her attorneys, Gregory E. Coolis and Associates, Limited. And in support of her complaint against the defendants, P.O. Ryan Perez and P.O. Gerald Carlton, individually, 
and the village of Dalton, a municipal corporation, states as follows. Jurisdiction and Venue 1. This action is brought pursuant to the laws of the United States Constitution, specifically, 42 U.S.C. 1983 and 1988, and the laws of the state of Illinois. To redress deprivations of the civil rights of the plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, this parties 5. The plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, was at all relevant times a resident of Homewood, Illinois. 6. The plaintiff, Kara Wilson, is the mother of Alexis Wilson, deceased. 7. Alexis Wilson was 19 years old at the time of her death. 8. At all relevant times, Alexis Wilson was a resident of the state of Illinois. 9. The defendants, P.O. Ryan Perez and P.O. Gerald Carlton, were at all relevant times duly appointed law enforcement officers employed by the defendant, Village of Dalton, and acting within the scope of their employment and under color of law. Count I, Excessive Force P.O. Perez. 10. The plaintiff hereby realleges and incorporates his allegations of paragraphs 1-9 as his respective allegations of paragraph 10 as though fully set for herein. 11. On or about July 27, 2021, Alexis Wilson was driving a vehicle in Dalton, Illinois and went to a drive through of Bubba's restaurant. 12. At Bubba's restaurant, a verbal dispute arose between Alexis Wilson and an employee of Bubba's restaurant. 13. The Bubba's employee called the police. 14. Dalton police officers, now known to be defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton, arrived at the restaurant and spoke with Alexis Wilson and her passenger. 15. Defendants ordered Alexis Wilson and her passenger out of the car. 16. The passenger exited but Alexis Wilson initially refused, informing P.O. Perez that she was not properly dressed and questioning why the police were called. 17. In response to Alexis Wilson's hesitation, defendant P.O. Perez opened the vehicle driver's door and started punching Alexis Wilson. 18. In fear for her safety, Alexis Wilson began to drive away. 19. Alexis Wilson's actions did not cause any imminent risk of serious or deadly harm to P.O. Perez or any other person. 20. Said use of force was unprovoked and unwarranted. 21. Defendant P.O. Perez's actions were intentional, willful, and wanton. 22. As a result of the actions of the defendant P.O. Perez, Alexis Wilson was physically injured. 23. Said actions of the defendant P.O. Perez were in violation of Alexis Wilson's Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment rights as protected by 42 U.S.C. 1983. 24. As a result of said actions of the defendant P.O. Perez, the decedent, Alexis Wilson, experienced pain, suffering, fear, anxiety, and emotional distress. Count 2. Battery State Law P.O. Perez 25. The plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, deceased, hereby realleges and incorporates her allegations of paragraphs 122 as her 26. Defendant P.O. Perez's actions constitutes battery under Illinois law. 27. As a result of the actions of the defendant P.O. Perez, the decedent, Alexis Wilson, experienced physical injuries, pain and suffering, emotional distress and fear. Wherefore, the plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, prays for judgment in her favor and against the defendant, P.O. Ryan, Count 3, Excessive Force P.O. Carlton 28. The plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, deceased, hereby realleges and incorporates her allegations of paragraphs 119 as her respective allegations of 29. In response to Alexis Wilson's attempts to drive away, the defendant P.O. Carlton fired his gun at Alexis Wilson. 30. Defendant P.O. Carlton fired his weapon several times at Alexis Wilson. 31. Alexis Wilson's reaction in pulling away did not warrant the use of deadly force. 32. Defendant P.O. Carlton's actions were intentional, willful, and wanton. 33. Said use of deadly force was unprovoked and unwarranted. 34. Said use of deadly force was disproportional to the circumstances. 35. Said actions of P.O. Carlton were the cause of Alexis Wilson's death. 36. 
The actions of P.O. Carlton were unreasonable. 37. The actions of P.O. Carlton were excessive. 38. Subsequently, the village of Dalton fabricated a story to cover up the unlawful acts of its officers, P.O. Carlton and P.O. Perez. 39. Said actions of P.O. Carlton violated Alexis Wilson's Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment rights. 42. The actions of P.O. Carlton constitute battery under Illinois law. Count V. Wrongful death P.O. Carlton 43. The plaintiff, 44. Kara Wilson is the mother of Alexis Wilson, deceased. In addition to Kara and Alonzo Wilson, the following persons may be entitled by law to recover damages on or about July 27, 2021. Defendant P.O. Carlton's actions caused the wrongful death of Alexis Wilson, in violation of ILCS 740 ILCS 181 at Seek. When Defendant P.O. Carlton discharged his firearm at Alexis Wilson, 49. As a direct and proximate result of defendant's wrongful acts as alleged above, Alexis Wilson died from multiple gunshot wounds. 50. As a result, Alexis Wilson suffered loss of life, loss of enjoyment of life, pain and suffering, and monetary loss. 51. As a direct and proximate result of the wrongful death of Alexis Wilson, Kara Wilson and Alonzo Wilson sustained. 53. After Alexis Wilson was shot, she survived for a period of time before she died. 54. As a direct and proximate cause of the conduce of the defendant P.O. Carlton, the decedent, Alexis Wilson, suffered pain and suffering, mental trauma, fear, anxiety, monetary loss, and eventually death. 55. This cause of action arises under the Survival Act, codified at 755 Ilks 5, 27-6. 57. Illinois law provides that public entities are directed to pay any tort judgment for compensatory damages for which employees are liable within the scope of their employment activities. 58. Defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton were, in July 2021, employees of the Village of Dalton Police Department. 59. In the above described events, defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton acted within the scope of their employment. 60. If defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton are found liable for any of the acts alleged above, the defendant village of Dalton would be liable to pay the plaintiff in a judgment obtained against defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton. Wherefore, should the individual defendants, P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton, be found liable for any of the acts alleged above, the defendant village of Dalton would be liable to pay the plaintiff, Kara Wilson, on behalf of the estate of Alexis Wilson, any judgment obtained against the defendants, plus attorney's fees and costs. All right. So that is the initial complaint. I do apologize that I did not take the numbers out. Um, that was what I was supposed to do before I put the document up. So I do apologize. I didn't know it was number each by one. But just a few things that they highlighted in that particular document is that one of the things they're going after the doctor the doctors i do apologize because we could be held liable i was thinking the same thing like the doctors like i'll be hearing that you could do for battery so i do apologize the police um is being uh accused of is battery and assault and uh excessive 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 force and we saw all of that and they should be found guilty for dumbness, okay? What was so horrific was when the shots were fired inside of the car, the officer on the outside shot recklessly. It, it, he just shot anywhere. It wasn't to say he was going to hit the car or anything. He could have hit anybody in the street. So we, we should be asking about all those officers, you know, what was the finding of the attorney general? That's something that we're going to bring back if we find out more information on part two. So I apologize, try to remove it. Um, part two, how do, well, I don't have the remove thing. Okay, in part two, we're going to see what the attorney general said and their findings related to the officers. And as you can see, I would, I know Perez is not around. We definitely know Perez is not around, but we definitely know that it's other officers that was involved. So we're going to be trying to figure out the who, what, and when. Okay. Bear with me. Um, something's going on with my stage again. Okay. 
So now what we're going to do is get into the next part of this proceeding because it, it, that it is the beginning. Now, there was a, a defendant village of Dalton answer the affirmative defense to the plaintiff complaint. So we're going to listen to that, to what was the village of Dalton actual response to everything that we have um, just showed you, okay? So just bear with me. I'm going to get that in there. Let me know if y'all want me to change the voice. I think the voice is okay. If not, we could change it to something else, but I think that voice is doing a good job. Hit the like button if you got, um, uh, you know, we're getting a better understanding, kind of expanding high horizons on this particular topic, kind of bringing it back up to the surface again, because while you're in Dalton and you're fighting for policies and you're looking to elect another mayor and trustees, these are some of the things that you can bring to their attention about the conduct of the police, you know, about definitely the use of police for security, um, about the crime that's happening in Dalton and Calumet. I'm going to do a special on that coming up before. So I, I have a lot to unleash this month. Gang, gang, gang is going on out there while we got Kamal Woods sitting in the background like this. Ice grilling people at the damn meetings, looking on his phone and shit, taking pictures, and the kids out there killing themselves. But I'ma just concede on that note. You know, I'm still digging. Gang, gang, gang. Now let's put this on. Now we're gonna listen to the village adult in response. Okay. And this response was in um uh, September. So it was originally filed in July. And we're about two years in. So this is kind of going into the two-year anniversary. So we got to bring this back to life. So let's get this on the screen. And we're going to let our reader read it. And I do have some more, uh, you know, some questions that I, I want to ask you guys. Hopefully y'all can answer them for me. See if y'all can, you know, just give me your perspective. So let's go. Defendant Village of Dalton's answer and affirmative defenses to plaintiff's complaint. Now comes the defendant. Village of Dalton, by and through its attorneys, Dale Golder Law Group, LLC, and for its answer and affirmative defenses to the plaintiff Kara Wilson's complaint, states as follows, Jurisdiction and Venue. 1. This action is brought pursuant to the laws of the United States Constitution, specifically, 42 U.S. 2. This court has jurisdiction pursuant to 28 U.S. C. 1331 and 1343 as this one. Matter involves issues of federal law and supplemental jurisdiction of the state of Illinois. Answer, the village admits the allegations contained within paragraph no. 2. 3. This court has personal jurisdiction over defendants, P.O. Ryan Perez and P.O. Gerald Carlton, because they are both employed by the Dalton Police Department and thereby residents of the state of Illinois. Answer, the village denies that P.O. Carlton is a resident of the state of Illinois, but admits the remaining allegations contained within paragraph no. Parties. 5. The plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, was at all relevant times a resident of Homewood, Illinois. Answer. The village lacks sufficient knowledge or information to either admit or deny the allegations contained within paragraph no. 5. 6. The plaintiff, Kara Wilson is the mother of Alexis Wilson, deceased. Answer the allegations contained within paragraph no. 8. 9. The defendants, P.O. Ryan Perez and P.O. Gerald Carlton, were at all relevant times duly appointed law enforcement officers employed by the defendant, Village of Dalton, and acting within the scope of their employment and under color of law. Answer The village admits that at all times pertinent here too. P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton were duly appointed police officers in the village of Dalton acting under color of law and within the scope of their employment. The village, however, denies that either P.O. Perez or P.O. Carlton at any point violated any law, engaged in any misconduct, or are otherwise liable to plaintiff with respect to any of the events alleged in the complaint. Count I, Excessive Force P.O. Perez. 10. The plaintiff hereby realleges and incorporates his allegations of paragraphs 19 as his respective allegations of paragraph 10 as though fully set for herein. Answer, the village restates and incorporates its answers to paragraph no's. 
1-9 as its answer to paragraph no. 10 as if fully stated herein. 11. On or about July 27, 2021, Alexis Wilson was driving a vehicle in Dalton, Illinois and went to a drive through of Bubba's restaurant. A answer. The village admits the allegations contained within paragraph no. 13. 14. Dalton police officers, now known to be defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton, arrived at the restaurant and spoke with Alexis Wilson and her passenger. Answer. The village admits the allegations contained within paragraph no. 14. 15. Defendants ordered Alexis Wilson and her passenger out of the car. Answer. The village admits the allegations contained within paragraph no. 15. 16. The passenger exited but Alexis Wilson initially refused, informing P.O. Perez that she was not properly dressed and questioning why the police were called. Answer. The village admits that the passenger exited after being ordered to do so by the responding officers. The village further admits that Wilson informed him that she was naked. The village denies the remaining allegations contained in paragraph no. 16. Mm. 17. In response to Alexis Wilson's hesitation, defendant P.O. Perez opened the vehicle driver's door and started punching Alexis Wilson. Answer. The village admits that P.O. Perez opened the vehicle driver's door after Wilson resisted his multiple lawful commands to exit the vehicle but denies the remaining allegations contained in paragraph no. 17. So they deny that he assaulted her. Okay, they're denying that. I just want you guys to hear that. In fear for her safety, Alexis Wilson began to drive away. Answer, the village admits that Wilson resisted the lawful commands of the defendant officers and drove off in her vehicle but denies the remaining allegations contained in paragraph no. 18. 19. Alexis Wilson's actions did not cause any imminent risk of serious or deadly harm to P.O. Perez or any other person. Answer, the village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 19. 20. Said use of force was unprovoked and unwarranted. Answer. The village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. So they're saying that the use was warranted. So just as this is Dalton responding to the allegations, okay? Answer. The village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 20. 21. Defendant P.O. Perez's actions were intentional, willful, and wanton. Answer. The village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 21. 22. As a result of the actions of the defendant P.O. Perez, Alexis Wilson was physically injured. Answer. The village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 22. 23. Said actions of the defendant P.O. Perez were in violation of Alexis Wilson's Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment rights as protected by 42 U.S.C. 1983. Answer. The village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 23. 24. As a result of said. Now, I'm just going to tell you this. I, usually when someone denies the allegation, they kind of put something behind it. So please just let's listen to this closely because it's just ridiculous. It just says they denied allegations. I want a little bit more detail on how they deny the allegation and their rebuttal, but I'm not seeing rebuttals. So I know it sounds redundant, but this is how the village of Dalton actually responded, which is ridiculous. Answer. The village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 23. 24. As a result of said actions of the defendant P.O. Perez. The decedent, Alexis Wilson, experienced pain, suffering, fear, anxiety, and emotional distress. Answer, the village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 24. Count 2, Battery State Law P.O. Perez. 25. Okay. The plaintiff. Let me just skip ahead because I'm going to read the rest real quick. And then we're going to get to her. Because they actually give one answer in um, 30. Okay, for real. Okay, this is ridiculous how the village is responding. If this is Delgado, Delgado sucks. Okay, he gave no rebuttal. It just say we deny, we deny. When you go to trial, you're gonna have to show each one. This is ridiculous. Let's listen to 28, and then we're gonna get to the one where they they actually say something. 28. 
the plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, deceased, hereby realleges and incorporates her allegations of paragraphs 119 as her respective allegations of paragraph 28 of count 3 as though fully set forth herein. Answer, the village restates and incorporates its answers to paragraph no's. In response to Alexis Wilson's attempts to drive away, the defendant P.O. Carlton fired his gun at Alexis Wilson. Answer, the village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 29. Now listen to this. 30. Defendant P.O. Carlton fired his weapon several times at Alexis Wilson. Answer, the village admits that P.O. Carlton fired his weapon several times in response to being dragged by Wilson and her vehicle while Wilson was fleeing from the scene in violation of the lawful commands of the defendant. Let's stop. Wait a minute. This is where they throw in the 52 fake out, the BS, because they're going to have to prove this when they get to trial, if this gets to trial. And they had a nice little paragraph for the response to the officer, Carlton, who shot several shots. Let's listen to what they say as they don't tell the truth and say that he was dragged. Now, that's the reason why we wanted to watch the video. So now while we're listening to the foulings and the response, now we can see what doesn't make sense, who may be lying. Does this make sense? That's how we fact find. This is how I fact find as a, a legal nursing consultant, a quality assurance. I cross reference. So let's listen to this. Their actual response, which I believe is lies. Answer. The village admits that P.O. Carlton fired his weapon several times in response to being dragged by Wilson and her vehicle while Wilson was fleeing from the scene in violation of the lawful commands of the defendant officers. The village further denies that P.O. Carlton at any point violated any law, engaged in any misconduct, violated Wilson's rights, or is otherwise liable to plaintiff with respect to any of the events alleged in the complaint. 31. Alexis Wilson's reaction in pulling away did not warrant the use of deadly force. <laughs> Answer. The village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. So they, they deny that it did not warrant deadly force so a lot of the next answer is going to be the village denies the village denies the village denies okay so what they deny is the defendant p.o carlton action was intentional and willful what they deny is said use of deadly force was unprovoked and unwarranted um said use of deadly force was undeplorable uh, for the circumstances they deny that said actions of p.o carlton were the cause of action uh wills uh, will uh, Alexis Wilson's death, the village lacks, and they answered this one. So let's listen to their little little bit on it. 35. Said actions of P.O. Carlton were the cause of Alexis Wilson's death. Answer. The village lacks sufficient knowledge or information to either admit or deny the allegations contained within paragraph no. Because that even heightens the wrongful death lawsuit right now because they can't verify that she was not alive when the car hit and when they got to her. So if they had any questions about Miss Alexis being alive or not, all they had to do is check a post or look at her chest. They should have pulled her out the car and start doing CPR. It, I have, and, and you know, we're going to have another live where I'm going to show you how cops de-escalate that we're going to, we're going to go on another live and we're going to link it to this. So you can see the actions, the gross, negligence and oh, oh abuse that is happening in Dalton and the reason why we're highlighting this I had seen cops uh, I'm just going to highlight shoot a gentleman in a video a young boy and it was wrong and I think it was very wrong and that cop ran to the person and started doing CPR on the boy and the boy like you shot me you shot me like just stay still you're bleeding you know because at the end of the day I don't I, I didn't support him shooting but he knew exactly what to do afterwards. And you have to call for medical attention. And that is something we're highlighting here that no medical attention was called or let's say rendered at the time of the car accident. So um, a lot of the other allegations. So we're going to listen when is, I'm going to read the ones that just say deny, deny, deny. And then the ones that they give their actual response, I'll let our reader read it. Okay. So again, the village denies that their, their knowledge if it's actually Carlton's fault. 
actions of PO were unreasonable. They denies that. The village also denies subsequently the village of Dalton fabricated the story to cover up the unlawful acts of its officer, PO Carlton and PO Perez. They deny that. Uh, answer the villa denies that. Again, um, said action of P.O. Carlton violates election, Alexis Wilson's fourth and 14th Amendment rights. They deny that. Let's see what else. Let's see, because I want to get a little response from Delgado. And he don't have much words. This is like a cookie cutter response. You see what I'm saying? He don't have he don't have any anything that I'm hearing. But I want you guys to just listen. OK, this is where your tax dollars are going. So they deny actions of P.O. Carlton um, constitute battery under the, the law because that's what they're pushing for, for this to constitute battery. And under the wrongful death allegations, let's just listen. Count V, wrongful death P.O. Carlton. 43. The plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, to answer... The village restates and incorporates its answers. Answer. The village restates and incorporates its answers to paragraph knows. Answer. The village lacks sufficient knowledge or information to either admit or deny the allegations contained within paragraph no. 44. 45. Hold on. Alonzo Wilson is the f deny the allegations contained within paragraph seek. When defendant P.O. Carlton discharged his firearm at Alexis Wilson. Answer. The village denies the allegations contained within paragraph, deny the allegations contained within paragraph no. 47. 48. On or about July 27, 2021, defendant P.O. Carlton's actions caused the wrongful death of Alexis Wilson, in violation of ILCS 740 ILCS 181 at Seek. When defendant P.O. Carlton discharged his firearm at Alexis Wilson, answer, the village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 48. 49. As a direct and proximate result of defendant's wrongful acts as alleged above, Alexis Wilson died from multiple gunshot wounds. Answer. The village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 49. 50. As a result, Alexis Wilson suffered loss of life, loss of enjoyment of life, pain and suffering, and monetary loss. Answer. The village denies the allegations contained within paragraph no. 50. 51. As a direct and proximate result of the wrongful death of Alexis Wilson, Kara Wilson and Alonzo Wilson sustained pecuniary loss. And now I want y'all to listen to this. This is count of uh, um, survival action. Okay. There, this is what we were talking about and what I think what they were supposed to do. Let's get to it. Hold on. Count six. Survival action the village states that it has filed a motion to dismiss count six pursuant to federal civil procedure rule 12 To an extent that an answer is required at this time the village denies each and every allegation contained in count six Answer the village restates and incorporates its answers to counts I through six as its answer to paragraph no 56 of count seven as if fully restated herein 53 Illinois law provides that public entities are directed to pay any tort judgment for compensatory damages for which employees are liable within the scope of their employment activities. Answer. The village admits the allegations but denies that either the village, P.O. Perez or P.O. Carlton at any point violated any law, engaged in any misconduct, or are otherwise liable to plaintiff with respect to any of the events alleged in the complaint. 54. Defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton were in July 2021, employees of the Village of Dalton Police Department. Answer. The Village admits that at all relevant times P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton were employees of the Village of Dalton Police Department. In the above described events, defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton acted within the scope of their employment. Answer. The Village admits that at all relevant times P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton were acting within the scope of their employment. The Village, however, Denny's that either P.O. Perez or P.O. Carlton at any point violated any law, engaged in any misconduct, or are otherwise liable to plaintiff with respect to any of the events alleged in this complaint. 1. At all times relevant here too, there was an effect in Illinois a statute commonly known as the Local Governmental and Governmental Employees Tort Immunity Act, <sighs> 745 Oaks 10, 1, et. Seek. 2. 
at all times relevant. So they tried to pull the immunity act in their response. Okay, I had to jump down. This is their defense number one, local government employees tort immunity act. They tried to throw that out there. Let's listen. These people are ridiculous. Affirmative defense, no. One, one, at all times relevant here too. There was an effect in Illinois of statute commonly known as the Local Governmental and Governmental Employees Tort Immunity Act, 745 Oaks 10, 1, et, seek, 2, at all times relevant here too, the village was a local public entity as defined under the Act, mm. 745 Oaks, 745 Oaks 10, 2-109, 4, accordingly, plaintiff's state law claims against the village are barred either in whole or in part, under section. They said that is barred for her to sue them. They are ridiculous. Let's keep it moving. Affirmative defense, no. Two. One. At all times relevant here, too, there was an effect in Illinois of statute commonly known as the Local Governmental and Governmental Employees <laughs> Tort Immunity Act, mm. 745 Oaks 10, 1, et, seek, 2. 745 Oaks 10-1-206-3. Under Section 2-204 of the Act, a local public entity cannot be held liable to a plaintiff because a public employee cannot be held liable to a plaintiff for any injury caused by the act or omission of another person. Uh, 745. So that's what they try to pull Act 2, that they are not liable for. At first, you can't bring it to against us because we're the government. Two, we're not liable because we're immune under the second part of that act okay please let's continue four accordingly plaintiff's state law claims against the village are barred yeah. either in whole or in part under section 2-204 of the act that's a lot affirmative defense no three one at all times relevant here too there was an effect in illinois of statute commonly known as the local governmental and governmental employees tort immunity act 745 oaks 10 one et 3. Under Section 2-202 of the Act, a local public entity cannot be held liable to a plaintiff because a public employee cannot be held liable to a plaintiff for acts or omissions in the execution or enforcement of any law, unless such acts or omissions constitute willful or wanton conduct. Unless it constitute willful or wanton conduct. And that's what they're trying to highlight, that Perez and Carlton behavior was willful and wrongful. 745 Oaks 10 2 202. 4. At all times relevant, P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton were executing and enforcing the law. Mm. 5. At all times relevant, any acts or omissions committed by P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton did not constitute willful or wanton conduct. 6. Accordingly, plaintiff's state law claims against the village are barred, either in whole or in part, under Section 2 202 of the Act. This is their defense, y'all. Three, under Section 10, 2 201 of the Act, a local public entity cannot be held liable to a plaintiff because an individual defendant officer cannot be held liable to a plaintiff for acts or omissions committed while exercising discretion in a non ministerial matter. 745 Oaks 10, 2 201. Two, Police officers acting in their official capacities on behalf of a municipality are entitled to qualified immunity for their acts or omissions. No. Nope. Three, the village is derivatively entitled to immunity. And that's why we need to get away, get out of this qualified immunity. You already know, I'm just throwing that out there, that Trump gave, they about to try to give Trump qualified immunity when he become the president so he can't be prosecuted for nothing. That's how qualified immunity works, and that is not a okay. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, people could do shady stuff in our government, and because they have a position, they're going to have qualified immunity. Uh uh, that's against the Constitution on all levels. I don't care if you're the president down to an officer, even us, me as a healthcare provider, I don't have qualified immunity. They, I am liable for battery, assault. Um, entrapment, all of that. I can hold my patient's arms and they can say I'm entrapping them. So if I'm held to a high extent, I'm just keeping it real. All these meter freakers need to be held too. Because we are all um, public servants. One, plaintiff at all times relevant had to had a duty to exercise care and caution for her safety. That's right. Two, 
to the extent any injuries or damages claimed by plaintiff were approximately caused, either in whole or in part, by plaintiff so negligent. So right here, not that's right. What they're trying to, their next defense is saying that Ms. Uh, Wilson was her actions, her, you know, Ms. Alexis Wilson, her actions was basically the cause of her situation. And they're saying her neglect was it. This is their defense, okay? Not the fact that the officers neglect to de-escalate and follow protocols and not come with guns drawn, you know what I'm saying? But we just gonna listen to their defense, okay? One, plaintiff at all times relevant her to had a duty to exercise care and caution for her safety. Two, to the extent any injuries or damages claimed by plaintiff were approximately caused, either in whole or in part, by plaintiff so negligent, willful, wanton, and or other wrongful. Conduct, any verdict or judgment obtained by plaintiff against the village must be reduced by application of the principles of comparative fault. So the principle of comparative fault is like, for example, we're going to use it in a car accident. If you are partially fault in the car accident, your insurance company will penalize you, but they will still try to fight the claim a little bit to make the other party um, pay. You see what I'm saying? If it's like a split fault. So that's what they're trying to highlight here, that, that if she do win, that she is not uh, should not be subjected to the full extent of monetary rewards. That is what they're throwing in here by saying that she should get a reduced application of the principle uh, at fault. OK, three such reduction must be in an amount commensurate with the degree of fault attributed to plaintiff by the jury in this case. And if plaintiff's fault is determined to exceed 50% of the total cause, then plaintiff must be barred from recovery herein. Wow. Affirmative defense, no. So here, that this is the next defense, failure to mit mitigate. Now, as you heard Ms. Wilson say on the news that she didn't find out nothing really but from the news. So when it comes to mitigation, that should have been Dalton, that should have been Mayor Henry in her administration or whatever, you know, uh, the police captain to update Ms. Wilson, give her information about what's happening, be transparent. But let's hear what they have to say about allegedly um, them not uh, being able to mitigate. Let's listen. Affirmative defense, no. Seven. One. Plaintiff at all times relevant her to had a duty to take all reasonable actions and make all reasonable efforts to mitigate her alleged damages. Yeah. 2. To the extent plaintiff failed to mitigate her alleged damages, any award obtained by plaintiff against the village must be eliminated or reduced in proportion with the amounts by which plaintiff failed to mitigate her alleged damages in this case. Now, I would like, let, let, let's just look at this without that on the screen. That was one of the things they put up without the law behind it, because that is just how they felt about that, that she should have mitigated, that the plaintiff should have took it upon herself to make sure that she mitigated like she was supposed to set up a meeting and get all the information together you see how they respond with such trash delgado you did look at him delgado law suit law group you did a terrible job you did a terrible job that was I'm going to say as far as the suit was a response was not the best read. I wanted to hear more detail on why, how, what was the laws that you felt? Why wasn't they responsible? That was supposed to be in there. And Delgado got an F for me. I'm just going to say that. Okay. F, F, and F. He's fired. Okay. Now the defendant motion to dismiss. There was a motion after this shortly after because that one was on 909 um now this is the defendant which is the village of dalton let me see can i pull that up for you guys we're going to keep it going so you can guys can get a full picture of what's been happening with this case and um we could bring you up to par i apologize. I just see my face because I have so many different parts. I want to make sure that I'm giving it to you in order. Okay. This shouldn't be so much of a hard. Oh, hold on one second. Can... Mm. I'm looking through because I see a lot of numbers. So what I'm trying to do is actually what I should have did was what I did with my other document is kind of like um, deleted a lot of the numbers. So it wouldn't be so 
a hard read, but this has a lot, a lot of laws stated in it. I'm just kind of running through it real quick. Let's get through it. Let's get through it. It's not as bad. We're going to get through it. Some of these documents we have in like numbers and stuff like what you heard in the first reading. And I tried to remove them and them 50 page documents. You got to go all through them and remove them. And I didn't see that they had so many numbers in here, but they within the paragraph. So we're going to listen. We're going to put it back on the screen. Please hit the like button. Please let me know that you're getting a better understanding of what happened. If you did not know what happened, we put content creators videos together now it's like a comprehensive look now is a comprehensive look of what's going on plus the cases because we want to figure out how we can actually actively make change in Dalton I say we I'm here but you guys is in Dalton you're living it you have to be there so what are the things that you want to address what do you want to address definitely this shit. excuse my language like let us get to it and you're welcome I love you Dalton you know, we will keep hope alive. Let's go. So the defendant motion to dismiss count V1, excuse me, I don't know these Roman numerals. I got to get better. And to strike the request for punitive damage. So they're trying to strike our request for punitive damage. Let's see what and why. Hopefully, if Delgado is the responsive here, let me just make sure. If he his is, he gave us some more. Yeah, that's his. Let's see if he know how to talk in this one, okay? The defendant's motion to dismiss count six and to strike the requests for punitive damages in counts two, four, and V from the complaint pursuant to Fed, R. Civ, P. 12 and 12. Now come the defendants, Village of Dalton, P. O. Ryan Perez, and P. O. Jared Carlton by and through their attorney, Michael A. Albert of Delgado Law Group, LLC, and in support of their motion to dismiss count six and to strike the requests for punitive damages in counts two, four, Envy from the plaintiff Kara Wilsons, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, deceased, complained pursuant to Fed. R. Civ. P. 12 and 12, hereby argue as follows. Introduction Count 6 of plaintiff's complaint, titled simply as a survival action, must be dismissed pursuant to Rule 12 because no such cause of action exists under either federal or Illinois state law. Rather, Illinois Survival Act only allows for the representative of a decedent's estate to bring certain causes of action on behalf of the decedent's estate, such as those for personal injuries, that the decedent would have been able to bring against a defendant prior to the decedent's death. As such, Count 6 does not state an independent cause of action upon which relief can be granted. And it is in fact merely redundant of the excessive force and wrongful death claims asserted against Officer Perez and Officer Carlton and Count I. So basically what it is saying is that um, this count, the, the, the survival action, is just is something that allegedly he's saying can't be used in the case because she's not a survivor. And this would have been something if, of, if she was alive. And it's like he, he's saying is simply reiterating the excessive force. If that's removed, then that's nothing. But at least he's saying something in this. We can hear Delgado has a mind. Let's listen. And it is in fact merely redundant of the excessive force and wrongful death claims asserted against Officer Perez and Officer Carlton and Counts I, III, and via the complaint. Similarly, plaintiff's request for an award of punitive damages made in her state law claims for battery and wrongful death must likewise be dismissed under Rule 12 because Illinois law clearly holds that punitive damages are not available in claims brought under the Survival and or Wrongful Death Acts. Consequently, the entirety of count six, along with the punitive damage requests made in counts two, four, and they're trying to say the wrongful death act in Illinois don't cover punitive damage. Baby, if it don't, it's going to today. Let's go to a factual background. This is some of his arguments back, guys. He finally said something. Factual background plaintiff, as independent administrator of the estate of her daughter, Alexis Wilson alleges that Wilson's civil rights were violated during an altercation with the defendants that ultimately resulted in Wilson's death at a Bobba's restaurant located in the village of Dalton on July 27, 2021. See General DKT. Number 1. According to plaintiff, police were called to the location in question after a verbal dispute arose between Wilson and a Bobba's restaurant employee while Wilson was sitting in her vehicle in the Bobba's restaurant drive through line. See DKT. 
Number 1. 11 13 officers Perez and Carlton arrived as the scene shortly thereafter and apparently spoke with both Wilson and her passenger. Without providing any other details, plaintiff alleges that the officers ordered Wilson and her passenger out of the car. CDKT. Number 1. 15. Plaintiff states that while the passenger existed the vehicle as instructed, Wilson allegedly refused because she was not properly dressed. CD. In response, Officer Perez purportedly opened the vehicle driver's door and started punching Wilson. CDKT. Number 1. 17. Plaintiff alleges that Wilson, fearing for her safety, began to drive away. CDKT. Number 1. 8. On July 12, 2022, plaintiff filed her seven-count complaint at law against the defendants. See General DKT. Number 1. Specifically, Plaintiff brings federal claims under Section 1983 for excessive force against officers Perez and Carlton, state law a state law claim for a survival action against Officer Carlton, and a claim for indemnification against the village. Mm -mm. See General DKT. Number 1. Also, in addition to a request for an award of compensatory damages, plaintiff also requests that punitive damages be awarded in all seven counts. See General DKT. Number one. So what they're trying to do is lower the counts because, you know, like if you 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 kill seven people, you're going to get seven different punitive damages. So that's what he's trying to do. Eliminate some of the things that may be considered a, a, a replication, just a different way of uh, representing it in law. Does that make sense? So that's what he's saying, that the Survivors Act is just is kind of similar to the battery, you know, and you they're going for the same thing. So he, his strategy here to me is that he's trying to eliminate some of these counts. So if they do get premium damage, it won't be so excessive based on each count. Okay. That's what I'm seeing here. Cause he ain't really doing anything, you know, but I, I see what you're doing, Delgado. I understand these lawyers and how you move. A state law claim for a survival action against officer Carlton and a claim for indemnification against the village. See General DKT. Number 1. Also, in addition to a request for an award of compensatory damages, plaintiff also requests that punitive damages be awarded in all seven counts. See General DKT. Let's Number 1. Let's get to this. P12. Argument count 6 of the complaint must be dismissed under Rule 12 because the Survival Act does not permit a decedent's estate to bring an independent cause of action but is instead merely the conduit through which a decedent's estate may seek compensation for certain injuries suffered while the decedent was still alive. See. As such, because plaintiff's survival action is predicated entirely upon the same conduct as alleged in her excessive force and wrongful death claims, it is therefore also duplicative of those counts. That's, plaintiff's that's what I was telling you. It's just a duplicate of those counts. So. Um, uh, let me see. Let me go to the next one. Failure of the state to legally sufficient because I count six fails to state a legally sufficient cause of action and is otherwise duplicative of the claims brought in counts I, three, and V. Count six of the complaint oh, titled simply. Let me get let me get past the survival act because that's all he's talking about. I hope he didn't make this whole thing about the survival act. That's all you gotta say. Punitive damage requests made by counts two, five. Four and five must be stricken because punitive damage are not available under Illinois law, either wrongful death action or in state tort. So he's trying to get that eliminated and he gives the, the law behind it. Basically, it's kind of repetitive of what he said in the other ones. That's why I'm going to try to move forward. Let's see what he say in conclusion. He ain't say much. Conclusion, wherefore, the defendants, Village of Dalton. P.O. Ryan Perez and P.O. Jared Carlton respectfully request that this honorable court grant their motion to dismiss count six and to strike their requests for punitive damages mad and counts two, four and V from the complaint pursuant to Fed. R. Civ. P so they're trying to get at least four of the counts removed out of the six. Let me just make sure that I know it was six originally. Uh, I think it was six counts. I think it was about six counts or seven counts they were trying to, uh, you know, charge them with. Well, you know, go after them with. So they're trying to get four of them removed. 
And that was actual Delgado response. Okay. The first one sucked. I was like, dag Delgado, you terrible. They paid you most of that $440,000 that was paid to the lawyers and you did that. And you did that. You suck. All right. Let's see. Before we get to our next reading. Now you hear his response. First Amendment complaint at law. This was one filed at 1215, 2022. Um, let me see if it's giving us any updates. Excessive force. Uh, I want to see if it's anything. They have the battery, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm counting eight. Eight out of the eight counts, Delgado try to get rid of four of the counts. Um, this next document, I'm trying to see what is the importance of this. They still are, um, had the other counts with the wrongful death, um, PO, the police officer related to Carlton, um, the survival action. They're still going for that because they're replying. I think they're replying mm -hmm. to, well, basically that's what they're doing. They're replying to what Delgado said and why I guess they're going to you know, continue to pursue these actions. Okay. Um, but before I do that, let's get into some questions. Delgado whole team is stone. They suck. They suck. Don't forget. I do. I still want to find out a little bit more about Delgado and the fixer. Dun, 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 dun. I think that's going to highlight why Tiffany is protected. Dun, 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 dun. Delgado is a big character, you know, so mm, people need to pay attention to that and what he's planning on doing. And Kathy said, will the insurance cover to pay the claim? At this point, we knew the insurance, allegedly they did not have insurance, right? Um, a little bit before or around the time of the $33.5 million because that exceeded that even insurance capability or the, or the plan, allegedly. So that's a big question mark that you as a resident or residents out there should ask. Do the village of Dalton have insurance to cover these numerous lawsuits that's still pending? How is the $33.5 million going to get paid? And all of the other financial questions we have. If any claims are one, is there coverage to collect? That's what you asked. Well, that's still up to debate. Delgado have a mind, having in mind. Oh, you said that's still up to debate, baby. Uh, listen, heard they were the fixer, like, like connections on a big level. You know what I'm saying? And I think um, Jedediah was mentioning that. Y'all gotta listen to Jedediah. His lives, he be ranting on, talking about stuff. Y'all don't catch it. Grace Levi be catching stuff. I be wanting to copy and cut and be like, look, y'all. But nobody want to pay attention. So I just listen to the hints. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go look at this. But yeah. So And he wasn't the first. There was a, a, I got the video of the fixer. Okay. we, we can, I can't just re-upload the other person's video. But I can do a reaction to it. So we make her do that. Okay. Um. You welcome. I appreciate you, Miss uh, Lisa J. Love you, girl. Blessings. Thank you for coming tonight. It's the first time I saw you, and I'm getting better with names, y'all. I, listen, I meet people every night when I work, and I'll be like, "Patient, if room zero fifty two, I'll be like, "Yes, ma'am. How you doing, sir?" They be like, "Oh, they love me, but I don't remember half of their names. I'm sorry." So y'all doing good. I love y'all. I remember y'all names and everything. I'm like patient in 502. Okay, let me stop. All right, so let me see if there's any more questions. Um, I, why do you think she should be able to sue the restaurant? I, I do think the restaurant did something totally wrong by calling the police on her, but it, at no time was it stated that they said that she had a gun. So the response from the police was not warranted. It was wrong, I think. But, you know, I put myself in everybody's shoes. Now, there's background information about the interaction 
with Miss Alexis and the workers there that I would hope will come out one day and we may be able to present that to you. But the reaction was unwarranted. Um, but I don't know how the uh, restaurant will be held liable because that was what they were supposed to do unless they directly injured her themselves. If it was a malice, if they lied and said she had a gun, you know, and it was, it didn't seem to be mentioned. Like, you know what I'm saying? It seemed like they just came out heavy hitting and exactly entitled to immunity. Who do they think they are? <laughs> this is corruption. So before we get into, I guess we're going to see, I think we have two more I, memorandum of open opinion and order. I think I got that one. Yeah, I do. United States District Courts for the North District of Illinois. This is the Mandarin of Opinion and Order. This was on 4 2023. Giving a little background. This is like an update on that. Let me make sure I download this because I don't have time for that to disappear on me. But I do want to ask y'all some questions, okay? So some of the questions I want to ask. As far as um, they're saying that it was a gun in a car, why do you think it took so long? Because allegedly they said it took a couple of days for them to say that it was a gun in a car. Um, what I did notice is what they said was, you know, the young man got out of the car, went back in the car. At some point, they caught, sorry, they caught it on camera. So that tells to me that there was a lot of time where Miss Alexis was outside sitting in front of that window and waiting allegedly that for, for him to be able to get out come in and things like that so the it i can say because some people would say you know how do you feel about that gun i'm going to tell you how i feel i feel like okay even though you can't have guns in illinois you know how it is it's, it's bad out there um it's not open carry state the cops didn't know it was a gun in the car so their reaction still seems unwarranted to me because they did not know because how did you find a gun four days later? Or you said something of the nature that he told you was a gun in the car. So there's some mixed information that we have to clarify about the gun issue. Four days. He said, I read the uh, restaurant said she had a gun. The news report, the news reported that, but that that's not what's inside of any other documents we read. Because you know, they would have replied, hindered. Delgado and said the assessor's force was warranted because a gun was placed on a call. You you see how they answered one thing, and if they had a like a uh, because they said they lied and said that she dragged the police. So you see how they answered that. So if it, if they knew it was a gun in the car from the beginning from the call, I think that Dalton would have used that as the ammunition. You see what I'm saying? So I it still highlights that the response wasn't warranted. Okay, so that's what I was asking about the gun. Y'all can leave your comments about that. Do you think that she got hit? Y'all know, y'all know, y'all know she did from what we see. That, that's a crazy question. Um, my thing too was, was ballistic used on the gun that they found? Because they made a lot, they, they lied and said that, well, he, they said that the officer assumed that shots was being fired at him, the one outside, Perez. But I want to know what type of investigation was actually done on a car, on the ballistics of the gun to see, because you know they was checking to see it had bodies on it or something. Obviously, it did not. Allegedly, the, the gentleman from outside sources, they're saying that he's about to do some years because of possession of the gun. Thank God the gun didn't have no, no bodies on it. So y'all can tell me how you feel about that. You know, and these are some of the hard, hard things we have to look at because we have people who are judgmental and be like, yeah, it was a gun in the car. It's Illinois. They're not supposed to have guns. So they, they brought it on themselves. No, this is what we need to talk about. We need to clarify this so people can really look at this from a human level. Yes, that's true. But he didn't even know it was one. So again, it shows that it wasn't warranted. Um, 
the law enforcement accountable unit, the Cook County uh, State, what did they reply? We're going to go into that, see what they said. Um, what do you think could have been some de-escalation techniques that the officers could have used? I, we definitely know they shouldn't came out guns blazing because to me, it don't seem like anything was indicated that a gun was being used to threaten. You can see in the video, it looks like a pole. It looks like something, you know, or whatever it is, but it's definitely not a gun. OK, and it's more background information to fill the holes in that I would love to have shared with you in our next live. OK, but there's more to that story. I want you guys to pay attention. So what de-escalation techniques you think that they could have used? What would you have done if you was an officer? I say this because you I want to you got to put yourself in their shoes. You they, they're afraid or whatever. I know they're supposed to be trained, but. What would you have done if you had the young lady in the car and she wouldn't get out allegedly? Um, and then you end up in the car, the car driving with you as an officer. What would you have done? Okay, I'm going to give you my opinion. I think there's a thing called a taser. I think there was um, a reasonable understanding that that car was going to crash and he was going to have to take that impact. Was killing her going or shooting at her going to stop the car faster? I don't think so. That's why I do agree that it was excessive force in the car. It It's a scary situation. And I'm talking on the behalf of officers. I told you my uncle was, you know, I always talk about him. God rest his soul. You know, I talk about him more that he's not alive than when he's alive because he I ain't like how he behaved. But with that goes to say they 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 are fearful, they can be afraid, but we are they, they're supposed to know how to behave in those particular situations. So I would myself assume that a taser would have been should have been used, in my opinion, or a way to try to stop the car. Because there have been guys in the car with their girlfriends and their girlfriends go straight OD, take the wheel. All right, you know some crazy chicks. And what they do to stop that car? They try to cut the key off, grab the wheel. There was a way without using your gun. So that shows me that no de-escalation and it was excessive. I can't tell you because most officers are unhinged. A lot of them deal with their ego, but it's about what you think should happen, not what the officers think. Because if you are part of the community, what could you do to prevent it? I.e., example, they have bills that set up for certain things that has happened, like the Amber Alert. How was that constructed? That was constructed because people came together with an idea and with a plan to try to make sure it doesn't happen. And it was not based on what the hell the officers did. Is what they did not do. So what do you think they should do? Like I said, taser. That's the first thing that they should re reach for in a situation like this. I would have tried to ask for her side of the story before yelling and telling her to get out of the car. Thank you. It's literally a restaurant. Okay. They literally pulled up and they were sitting there for a while or sitting there for some time frame from when the call came in and the officer showed up. If it was something so crazy and wild, I would assume that they would have been murked off. Like, Bobby, we about to get up out of here. They calling the popo. So it really didn't did not make sense on why the officers didn't come out. Like, hey, what's going on? You know, you know, did they think surround, make sure they were secure, not grab her, go in her car, and do all of this crazy stuff. But I agree with you. I agree with you, Miss Lisa Jack. Um, let's go. The fact that Alexa was. Uh, his fourth murder says a lot about the officer, and that is a great highlight. That was one of the questions that I wanted to ask you guys. What do you think? Uh, everybody going to ask the same thing. Fire him that, you know, officers are involved in these batteries, assault, um, excessive force, and murders. What do you think should happen to them? I mean, obviously, I think it should be a national protocol for officers federally, for all officers to follow, because state-wise, town-wise, jurisdiction-wise, everybody doing their own motherfucking thing, okay? We got to hit the federal level and say these are guidelines that they all have to follow every police agency, 
this is what I thought Black Lives Matter was the fuck gonna do. Excuse me. I had to throw that in there. But they ain't do shit. I was like, they about to hit the federal level, get some bills in there, make sure that it's across the whole United States. But, but that's what I believe should happen where it should be a uniform code of penalty where you get excessive force, you get this, you get it written up, you get this, depending on the level. You know I mean, it, it takes the community um, to come up with that. That's why I thought another thing that Black Lives Matter was going to do was create a bridge between the Black community, poverty community, low-income community, and the police who are not from their community, who don't identify with them, psychologically going through things. You know what I'm saying? I thought that things like that was going to happen where they were going to try to get these policies in place where they do have tests. I don't know if they got all psychological tests for these the same, but I don't know if it's hitting the lick on the mountain. So we need to figure out what's the standardized test for these damn police and start asking the right questions. So that is kind of like, what I'm thinking about when it comes to police being penalized, because you could say they're supposed to be fat. It's not easy as said and done, you know, especially depending on the state law, depending on the employment laws, depending on immunity, what is immune, all of that plays a part. And that's why we have to understand it and where to get this information and how each law governs us in each one of our states, because every state is different. That's why I talk abstractly, because what happens to y'all indulgent acts it's different out here you know what i mean especially different you see how it is in uh, fulton county so um let me see if i have another question so if y'all have any more suggestions about what would you have done in that situation you see what i'm saying what do you think they could have done um what should have happened to the officers we said that notification process i know is a notification process in dalton in every police station and that is horrendous that miss wilson had to find out about more more details and things about her daughter's uh case online and people turning the narrative and everything and then they had a nerve to have a fouling in response that she neglected to mitigate like Miss Wilson was supposed to call Dalton and say, I'm mitigating today. Meet me here. I got this. I got that. I need this person here, this person. What policies are set in place? If they're set in place, how do you give them a minute and re reinforced in Dalton? These are the things that you need to ask the people who are running for mayorship. Mayorship. You hit them, hit them right in the beginning. Baby, we want policies. OK, that's why I don't, I'm honestly that I'm be honest. I want y'all to participate. Try your best. I don't participate because I feel like there's no real policies that set in place by individuals that benefit me and our community and the low income. There's nothing consistent. Like, example, the plan for black America. I'm going to throw that out there. There needs to be a plan for each town. You need to have an agenda of what you need, the resources, create a checklist, and then each candidate evaluate if they're actually hitting any of those points on the checklist. Does that make sense? Then you make another checklist of your demands, what needs to be fixed. How, how can it be fixed? And then you need to reevaluate or triple evaluate the people who's coming in to run to make sure they ain't crooked motherfucking joes excuse my language crooked joes okay look what we got people being planted in places he free men allegedly you know what i'm saying other people just being planted in there to keep the chaos and to pay attention while dalton burns come on all right that's why I feel the restaurant should be held accountable too, babes, because they made the situation bigger than it was. Yes, and I did hear, hear that they were nasty. I did hear something about their behavior that was not acceptable. Now, if that's something legally, you know, we could, could feel, because I think so, but what physical actions put her in direct danger? Yes, calling the cops. But that was in 
um, a reaction to what they perceived her doing. Okay. So that is part of what they're mandated to do instead of them attacking her and pulling her through the window. I know seen some people come out these damn places and they hook off on, on people who buy food, coming in talking shit or have a problem. Even if the person is right, these workers are disgusting. So that's why I do agree with you, but just talking from a legal perspective that I'm just clarifying, there's no real ground. Like for instance, in the Kanika Jenkins case, oh, they were ground. There were grounds for her to sue them because literally it happened in areas that were supposed to be secure. There were um, negligence, places that wasn't secure, all of that, all of that. Even though we have all those conspiracies, the basis of this happening was directly related to their negligence. And, and the, the negligence can't really be, be proven by the restaurant, but they just, you know, was some ridiculous asses. Um, damn, that's something that breaks my heart. Yeah, I mean, I'm you know, just know that I'm I'm a very compassionate person. When I talk about this stuff, I have to talk about it straight so we can get to the facts. Maybe later, later on, I'm definitely I ain't gonna talk about it, but let's stay focused. Mm, okay, so um, I've been saying that for the longest, but that would only be right. So they refuse to change that law and function. Um, Unfortunately, are you talking about the immunity that they just gave Trump to? Hmm. Um, they also need every three years out. They uh, hold on, They also need every three years outside psychological evaluation for post PSD. They, they do. Yeah, they do. Is that for Dalton or is that statewide? We, you know, let us know. Definitely. I. I, I that's what. That's your suggestion. Just let me know because I'm trying to figure it out but if that's your suggestion that's great they should get post um psychological evaluations for any major event that they go through shooting things like that i have seen some cops shoot somebody and literally break down and cry i'm gonna be honest i was like damn that's fucked up he ain't want to do it you know what i'm saying so i'll be trying to look at it from all sides are we talking about how everything has been um concealed Cancel for Thornton, what you mean? Can, cancel for Thornton, what do you mean with Thornton? What are we talking about? Are we talking about um, Dalton or Thornton? For police period, uh, period grace, they should be evaluated. Yes, you're 100% right. And how, uh, and um, public officials. I think they should take psychological evaluations as well. And you're, I'm not playing it. I'm not being funny. Um, Judge Glanville, the one that is the, the the top judge out here in Fulton, causing um mayhem, mayhem. Okay, I think all public officials should go through some psycho psychological value value. Yeah, they should evaluation. I agree. All right, so what we're gonna do is now. I'm gonna see. Can I get to um? Let me see. Can I get to this one right here? The memorandum opinion of order. Let's see if we can read the other one, uh, the defendant motion to dismiss. If we could get through it. Let me see if they hit anything that was good. Didn't we do that one? Okay. The next one is supposed to be, it was the first amendment complaint at law. And this was an update to the Fallon. Let's get to that. Let's see what that's about. First Amendment, let me see. I hope you guys are having a great night. I hope you guys are getting a great understanding of what's going on. We're breaking down each section of what's going on with Miss uh, Alexis Wilson case, giving people a refreshing look of what happened. And also, we're talking about it from um, a perspective that if we could fix it and prevent it, how can we do that? And once we have those conversations, then you can bring it to your next elected official before choosing them, not the next, before choosing them. And also ways of getting in your ass out, you know, continue to bang on her every, every single meeting, even though she's not answering it, it is put it in front of the limelight. And little things that drip out actually makes other people run with it and look at it and they do a video on it and then it just go viral and then FBI, 
You know, FBI. That's all we trying to do. Hit him. Hit him high. Hit him low. Yup. Henry, I'm coming for that ass. You've been a bad girl. So let's see. First Amendment complaint at law jurisdiction. Let's see what it says. I'm, I'm going to try to get through this. First Amendment complaint at law now comes the plaintiff. Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, deceased, okay. by and through her attorneys, Gregory Eek. Let's 10. See. The plaintiff hereby realleges and incorporates. So this is, I think this is just basically a amendment of the original complaint. I think they changed some things up. Let me just look to see what count, if they removed any, any account, any counts. They still kept um, excessive force. They still kept battery state law because you saw Delgado was trying to get that off. They still kept excessive force. I just want to see if anything changed. Um, they went back into battery state law for uh, the Pacific cop. That's still there. Wrongful death, count five. So I, the wrongful death, let me just look and see if the first one, they went in and it was wrongful death. Let me see. Let me make sure. That that was one of the because they kept saying excessive force, battery, battery. Okay, wrongful death was in that original complaint. I just want to see if there's anything changed. Wrongful death, wrongful death, survival action. Oh, they they they're going back on some of the things that basically Delgado said. Okay, so for the survival action, since Delgado want to be disrespectful and basically say that she was not alive, so they can't go with that. This was their response. Okay, okay, this was the response. Now, just trying to find what you know the keys in here before we read this whole thing again. Six, count seven, survival action sixty-two. The plaintiff, Kara Wilson, as independent administrator of the estate of Alexis Wilson, deceased, hereby realleges and incorporates her allegations of paragraphs 161 as her respective allegations of paragraph 62 count 7 as though fully set forth herein. 63. After Alexis Wilson was shot, she survived for a period of time before she died. And that's what I was saying. If she, they know she survived for a while, why didn't they render care? Let's finish listening. This is their rebuttal. As a direct and proximate cause of the conduct of the defendants P.O. Carlton and Perez, the decedent, Alexis Wilson, suffered pain and suffering, mental trauma, fear, anxiety, monetary loss, and eventually death. So that's what they were saying, because under the Survivors Act, they have to suffer pain, suffering, mental trauma, fear, anxiety, these type of things. And they were trying to say she doesn't meet that requirement because she just was just, just, was just simple. And it was not. Let me go into something else and see if, what else they change. Illinois provides public entities with direct pay and tour indemnification. Let me see. This is the reply about the indemnification thing. And they let you know, we immune. And he said, hell to them. No, no, no. Okay, let's listen to what they say about indemnification. Count eight, indemnification 66. The plaintiff, Kara Wilson, on behalf of the estate of Alexis Will, 67. Illinois law provides that public entities are directed to pay any tort judgment for compensatory damages for which employees are liable within the scope of their employment activities. 68. Defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton were, in July 2021, employees of the Village of Dalton Police Department. 69. In the above described events, defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton acted within the scope of their employment. 70. If defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Carlton are found liable for any of the acts alleged above, the defendant village of Dalton would be liable to pay the plaintiff any judgment obtained against defendants P.O. Perez and P.O. Because basically they were trying to say, oh, no, you can't sue the government. So even if they are guilty, that was their first response, remember? And they're like, nope, under the law, they're found liable and they're under your scope of prosecution, just like me if I'm liable at work. And I'm at this hospital. They're not going to directly sue me. They're going to sue the hospital. If it gets gross now, there has been actions taken against nurses that the nurses that got locked up. I made a whole video about that. Like, ooh, we going to jail. Make a mistake, niggas. I'm sorry. So I understand this, like I said, from where my perspective, legally, because 
I'm kind of in a situation where we have to be honorable and take responsibility. So again, that was just the response to the response. And they said, eh, eh, you're not immune because according to law, if the people that work under you are found guilty or they're the people that caused the injury, you have to pay for it. Okay. That's not going to happen. And for you to be insensitive and say, basically, no, she, she just was. Mm. So that doesn't fall in the survivor act. They're disgusting because somewhere, somehow in some paperwork, it was acknowledged that she was alive for a certain amount of time, period, period. That's ridiculous. Yes. And that's why we have to know the details. That's why we have to know the details so we can bring this back to the forefront, put the pressure back on Hinger. Because what I'm hearing is that when Miss Carver comes to the meeting, you already heard. She got to use another name because they don't want her to talk. The news is trying not to broadcast her. And that's why we are. Okay? No. So I'm about to be two years in. Drunk as Imagine if my small business blew up overnight and I woke up to some sales. Boost this video so people who like my products can find me. Algorithm. Where you at, bitch? Because I'm tired of posting viral content and getting two and a half likes. We finna fight, ho. お前の彼女とスライドするスライドするいやおうええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええええ